Hey there, it's Steve from B&H Photo, and we're here at NAB in 2015. I'm talking with Steve Turner from O'Connor Revitech Group, and he's going to show us the brand new O-Rig. Steve, thanks. Appreciate nice, it. Nice to meet you, Steve. I've heard about this. Yeah. I know some of the elements, the O-Grips were from before, Correct. but this is a completely new rod base plate system. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a new um, handheld rig. What we're trying to replicate is a handheld version of the 1030D head, right? What that means is an O'Connor head doesn't care what you put on top of it. All it cares is, is it more than zero pounds and less than 40 pounds. And this right? is the same thing. It doesn't matter what camera you put on it. Any camera and lens combination. So it's completely camera and lens ag agnostic, okay? So, I mean, how it works is you get, you get this sheet. I mean, you can work it out yourself, but to make it easier, we've got a sheet with the base plate. And what it does is it has a list of all cameras down the left-hand side. This is not an exhaustive list, it's just the ones we've managed the to put on there. The basic list. So far. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you've got, you get one um, column of numbers, which tells you what setting to put your base plate onto. So, so now this is for rod height compatibility. It's exactly. The, the dimension is actually the distance from the lens center to the base of the camera where you're going to be mounting the plate. All right? And it used to be rigidly fixed and controlled, but now it's all over the place. Which is, it's all over the place, right? There's no real standards So essentially, there. this is now a pre-indexed system for you. So what it does is you, you, you read off the, which your camera model is. There's a set of scales down the side, a little uh, red enamel um, dot there. So you open up the base plate, you slide it up to whatever the setting said, and then lock it off. No guesswork. No guesswork. And I'm going to point out spring-loaded locking levers, which I adore. Yeah, well, there's one control for um, the height, one control for all four uh, rod locks. Wow. And one control for sliding the plate back and forth and, re and, and releasing it. All right, so there's three controls on it. So if you've only got a C300, and this is the base plate you bought, and I've set that for the C300, that's now the base plate for the C300. I never need to touch that control again. Ever. Until, unless you put it on a new camera. Unless I put it on a new camera, exactly. So there's the base plate. Now your camera, you just mount it to a standard slide plate. So you can dock it into your head, dock it into this rig, or dock the whole rig and plate into the into the head. Now we say standard, we're compatible with what with this guy? With the Oconnor 1030D, Oconnor 1030DS, all 100 millimeter Vinton heads, the Sackler, Sackler City 7 plus 7. So, you know, the majority a of a uh, wide range of 100 mil heads, right? Beautiful. So you take the standard slide plate, it locks in the top. You can also use this to make your lens changes because you can unlock the knob, slide the plate, the camera and lens back, change your lens, put the lens back on, and then push the camera and lens back up to the map box. Oh, so you don't have to pull the map box off to... Exactly, okay. It's also um, top release, so I can click the button and the whole thing comes out vertically. So if you've got a battery behind and a it's map box It's a lot box nicer front, than trying to line it up and slide it in. Yeah, Absolutely, and sometimes you can't because there's map box in the way or there's a battery behind, so it's actually, um, you're restricted. Beautiful. So there's the base plate. 15 mount lightweight rod standard, yeah. yes? What the, what the other figure tells you for your camera is if you need a spacer for your map box follow focus and which pair of holes to use. Oh. Right? So it makes it very, very simple. Um, this also doubles up as a bridge for your O grips. So if you, don't, if you don't like mounting your O grips to the side of the map box, you can mount it to the side of this bridge too. Right. Okay. You know, if I did a simple setup here, so here's the, um, the bridge for the map box. Put that on. Lock it off again. One control. We don't have a set. Locks both my rods. Locks both your rods. Nice. The base plate has a level bubble on the back, so you can level your rig. Okay. You know, people people forget that little simple thing. Yeah. That can make yeah. all the difference. Well, I mean, often you're going to be leveling on the frame of your camera, but on certain terrain, it's not quite easy to level. But also, if you if you're rigging in without your camera on it, right, you can get it all level before you put your camera Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Okay. So there's the base plate. As I say, it one control locks all of the knobs. Right. So the next part you might want to put on is a shoulder pad. That I wouldn't ask about the shoulder pad because it's really, really nice looking. Yeah, so it's beautiful. It's all hand stitched leather. You've got um, all kind of branding in there. It, we've chose a real soft, su supple leather. It's got memory foam in there just to, to make it uh, more comfortable. Another unique thing about the base plate, it, sorry, the shoulder pad, is that you can slide it on this way and sit it on top of your shoulder. Like if you were to buy a regular base plate, it would normally be in that configuration. But right. well, you have got a second set of holes. I saw this with a different camera on it. Right. So nice. Set, so now I can tuck it into my chest, really pull in, three stable three-point contact. And there's an option that allows me to mount that like this onto a tripod. Here. Yeah, I'll show that in a little while, yeah. So, and then you can obviously hook it over your back too. Yeah. Now there's mounting points for the ore grips, and I'll show why that's important in a little while. Of course, got our counterweights. 
Um, you know, we've just made them a real beautiful thing. There's a kilo each, and there's two of those in the in the right. kit. There's also space for more if you need more. There's space for more old grips if you need more old and grips. And where would I use the old grips? You can use the old grips on the map box, you can use it on the bridge, the bridge for the follow focus, and you can use them on the shoulder pad itself. So you also get this little T-piece in there if you are using a, um, a Blackmagic pocket camera or A7S or a DSLR where they've only got one fixed screw. You've got a little piece in there that you can just slide up and put up against the back of the camera and lock and out. And then lock it so it's not going to spin on the plate. Yeah, and this will work on any Sackler Vinton plate. Beautiful. Right. Or, or Connor. The last element is um, an offset bracket. Now, typically, you're used to seeing an offset bracket. It looks a little bit like this. It's a solid piece of material. Shapes a bit like that for putting your um, your screen on the back of your camera in, right. front, in front of your face. But we've taken this a little bit step further, so it's fully articulatable. You can rotate into any angle you like. And you can also run the rods underneath the camera and put your shoulder right. pad underneath the camera. You can make just very minor offsets, just if you want to just take the camera off your face a little bit. This is really a complete system, yeah. really well thought out. And even just if you want to put a slight angle in for the slope of your shoulder. Okay? Right. But it can do something else that's pretty cool. So Steve, we talked about um, the fact that you can put your all grips and mount them to the pad, and you were asking about that. Right. And I was also so they mount on the back. They they can mount on the back or on the sides. There's mounting points Beautiful. on the sides too. Okay. And therefore, it makes it help lift it down off your shoulder, for example. But another cool application is because this I showed you this um, articulatable offset adapter. Another cool thing I can do is I can just undo that lever here, flip it around 90 degrees, lock it off. And now you can see I could lift it up by this handle and this handle and use this as a body pad to you know, brace against I'm, I'm my body. I'm smiling here because this is so simple and yet I wouldn't think about it. Yeah. And somebody did and that's really cool. Yeah, no, I, I, we've had some enormously strong feedback on how great this is. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. It is. And, and everything in the kit is available by itself. Yeah, it's all available a la carte, yeah. So if I can build my kit slowly over time or I can get the whole shebang at once. Absolutely, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Here's what I was asking about before, when it, the shoulder pad's in the forward position. So obviously you'd, you'd normally have your um, slide plate bolt from your head bolted to the bottom of the base plate so you could dock it on the head. Right. What we did think about was people who like using it in this position where they're pulling it in their chest and, and they've got this element right underneath the camera body, this, um, sl this plate is obscured. So if you do use it in this mode, there is an optional accessory. It just mounts to the top of your slide plate and has two pins. And these pins, the angle's been worked out so it leaves your camera horizontal. So all you would do is slide the shoulder pad down on the two pins and lock it off lock using it off the pin lock. Steve, this is a beautiful, really well thought out system. Thank you very much. Very say, solid. Yes, you know, it's uh, built to last. Built to last. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. And thanks for watching.